Okay, this is as exciting as it gets. UCLA's down two in overtime. Looking to pull the upset of upsets against number one undefeated Gonzaga. Here we go. Johnny Juzang, who made shot after shot in this one. You're going to go for the win? Goes to the hole. Hangs. Gets his rebound. Lays it in. We're going to double overtime. Except Jalen Suggs over half court. It's in the air. We're not going to double overtime. It's over. Gonzaga has won it. Are you kidding me? You know, sometimes when people say, I'll make it up to you, they rarely do. The first game didn't give us much. This was everything you could have possibly expected in terms of excitement and drama. This was like Rocky One, where he fought his heart out. He didn't get the decision, but man, it was tremendous. UCLA, nothing to be ashamed of. Gonzaga finds a way on a heave at the gun in overtime. Juzang really gave you an effort there. He was tremendous. Look at UCLA, they're big four. All of them, over 50% are better from the floor, all in double figures. Juzang at 29. For Gonzaga, all five of their starters in double figures. Timmy and Ayayi, 20 of 27 from the floor combined. You know, some games you say, well, did this team win it or did this team lose it? Both teams played great. UCLA gave you everything they had. Gonzaga took every blow and were efficient on offense and never blinked. And that's often time, no two ways about it. And Jalen Suggs with the shot of the tournament in recent memory right there. Gonzaga gonna play on Monday night against Baylor. Last team to win the title and go undefeated, Indiana in 76. Last team to show up and play for the title undefeated, Larry Bird in Indiana State in 79. Now we have one this year, 2021 Gonzaga Bulldogs, 31-0. This was not dominant, but they were good. And they took UCLA's best right hand and somehow came out the other side. And as I said, they will play Monday night. Let's send that out to Indy. Here's Akeem Dermish and the rest of the guys. Have a Final Four, kids. Are you kidding me? From Indianapolis, 93 to 90. The final eight minutes of this game, three minutes in regulation in the second half, and five minutes in overtime were absolutely bonkers, bananas. Tim Doyle, Avery Johnson, uh, socially distanced from me here in Indianapolis on our set. We both watched this live coming up here, getting set. Avery, I'll start with you. Your reaction is what when you saw the Jalen Suggs three go in at the buzzer? Yeah, it was, I'll take it from Coach, I think he's having some audio issues right now. I think that it's uh, the second greatest college basketball shot I've ever seen, Coach. I would probably say the greatest shot I ever saw was Leitner versus Kentucky when he made the turnaround jump shot. They won that game 103-102. But the Suggs three today just culminated a game that was just absolutely outstanding. Gonzaga, over 58% from the field. UCLA, just a bit less at 57% from the field. Johnny Juzang going down there, making big-time shots, big-time plays, following up his miss. And then the best player on the court, the player with the most potential on the court, the one who had the wow moment earlier in the game with the block shot and the sick dime, banks in a three. I thought as I was watching it, Hakeem and Avery, it was one of the greatest college basketball games I had ever watched. And now that I have a second to digest it, I think the only other thing that I can compare it to was Leitner's shot against Kentucky as the greatest college basketball moment. I think this might be second, Coach. But you got to feel for UCLA. It's, it's been a tremendous season. Coach Conan has been... <laughs> on top of his game from start to finish. Now, we thought he should have called timeout at the end of re regulation. But uh, I'm, I'm so proud of UCLA. As happy as I am for Gonzaga, Johnny Juzang, uh, Tiger Campbell, uh, Riley inside. Riley even made some jump shots yeah. tonight. Uh, but what a tough way to lose. They have nothing to hold their heads down. They're actually one or two years ahead of schedule.
So uh, just give them credit, their both coaching staff. But I am so happy to be a college basketball fan right now because we get Baylor and Gonzaga on Monday night. Yeah, it's going to be incredible. But before we break down that monster matchup, one versus two, the final minute and a half in overtime was silly. Let me just recap for you here. Johnny Juzang missed a bunny. Then Andrew Nemhard hits a three to give him a five-point lead at 90-85. to 85. Uh, Jaime Jaquez hits a three to make it a two-point game. Juzang hits another two to make it 90-all. And then we get the inbound from Jalen Suggs has the wherewithal the freshman does to run up the court, has time, heaves up a three off the backboard and in, arguably one of the greatest shots you'll ever see in NCAA tournament history to send you to the national championship game. Yes, the double-digit victory streak of 27 in a row is over, but this was the game, Tim, that Gonzaga was tested and they passed. Yes, they didn't cover the 14.5-point spread, but they won the game. They passed the test. Yeah, and that's all that matters at the end of the day, right? You got to have more points, right? It's not survive by 15 in advance. It's just survive in advance. And they were able to figure out a way to win this game. And like I said, I think it's one of the greatest moments. Coach, I want to challenge you to this. One of the greatest college basketball moments I've ever seen. Now, I was born in 1982, so I know I'm much, much, much younger than you. Just kidding, Coach. But like the Leitner moment, I knew where I was. And that was in 1992, and I was sitting in my dad's bed, and my brothers were in bed, and that was like a, that was a wow moment. But that wasn't to go to the national championship game. This was to go to a national championship game. This was to bring Gonzaga their first national title. This was to keep Gonzaga undefeated. So maybe as time goes on, it might be more significant of a shot than Leitner's shot was against Kentucky. But that was the first thing that popped into my mind. But I thought UCLA's execution – I was surprised, Coach, that they went toe-to-toe with Gonzaga. Were you surprised with the pace in the game? Uh, Very surprised. And I think the pace was dictated by the quality of shots that UCLA was getting. In transition, whether it was Juseng working inside, they went to Rodley late in the game. Uh, Tiger Campbell had his moments, especially uh, the switch against Timmy. You know, they got Timmy in foul trouble, which you were really concerned about. Uh, so I think the pace was dictated by, hey, maybe Gonzaga's defense wasn't as good as they thought it was coming into the game. They, as time wore on, they built their confidence. And as we said, we were joking with Hakeem about this. It only takes one prayer. It only takes one game. And, and you could feel UCLA's confidence growing more and more as the game wore, wore on. And they made some impossible shots. They made some off-balance shots. But when you got Johnny Juzang, and I, we, you know, we talked about this earlier. When Johnny Juzang had the opportunity to potentially go for 30 points tonight, then we knew that could keep UCLA close. Both teams did a magnificent job of taking care of the ball. But the pace of this game was dictated by the quality of shots that UCLA got in this game tonight. Coach, I want to take you back to the end of regulation because you pointed it out because I really want to break down the sequence here in terms of how this game played out. The offensive foul called on Johnny Juzang. Mick Cronin saw the timeout. What are you doing in that moment as a former head coach? Well, as a former head coach, especially coaching in college, as soon as Gonzaga misses that shot, you're signaling, signaling your players to come. Get the ball to half court, let's get a timeout. Let's get organized. Sometimes, you know, whether folks in the media or coaches say, well, I don't want to give the other chance to set their defense. No, you want to be able to get a quality shot. You want to stay away from charge situations. They were a little bit discombobulated. Uh, You want to make sure you, you go back and rewind the tape and say, hey, when we're in this situation, here's how we want to execute. I don't think their spacing was great. You know, it had three guys on the left side of the floor. He ended up driving to... Want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis. No yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.